It is here, the Mystic Palatero. Now this is custom edition. This is from Chiro Marchetti, and you can have a custom version made, which I pre-ordered back in September, with your name on each card. Now again, I'm not sure if this has ever been done before, so I'm kind of excited to see it. Here is the very large, beautiful deluxe box that it comes with. Now it comes with the deck of cards and a book uh, along with a cloth. So, ooh, very cool indeed. Let's take a look at the book and the cloth last because 90% of you just want to see the actual tarot deck. Plus it looks like it's in there pretty good. There we go. So pull these out and take a look at those last. Very, you know, with Tiro Marchetti, you pretty much get extreme high quality, uh, no matter what you get. Sorry for the camera shake there. I bumped the camera. It is on a little stand. Okay, so let's go forth and find out how everything looks and all of that. So here is the cloth that I received, a nice purple cloth. It feels very, uh, very soft and velvety. I like it a lot. Um, let's look inside. Here's the inside of the cloth. Nice too, pretty high quality. And of course, the cards, which everybody wants to see. So there is the Fool. Here's the side of the deck, and here's the back of the deck. Now again, this is the first tarot deck I've ever seen where you can get your name custom created on it. Uh, other than printing your own, take a quick sneak peek at the book. There we go, very cool. You got a signed Chiro Marchetti card with Tarot Oracle on it. Book looks like it is in black and white plus color. It looks like you got a color section with, oh, there you go. It looks like color throughout. So I like it, I like it a lot. Here is the cloth. It is a smaller cloth. If you have his big $65 cloths, this is obviously gonna be a little smaller than that one. It also doesn't have the extra lining on the back that his more expensive cloths do have, but I did get a cloth and it's big enough for the stream and for video, so I like it. I'm definitely going to use it. So let's go through and make sure we don't have any damage on the cards. He did say somebody had a damaged deck, so making sure I do not have one. And wow, this is wrapped super tight. Let's hope I don't introduce damage as I uh, actually open it. There you go. I think I was being super careful there. That is a really thick wrapping, like super, super thick. Normally, yeah, you can hear like, you can hear just how thick that is. So that's that's nice to have that. All right, a uh, little bit kind of warped, I guess, but you know, who cares? It's paper slash cardboard. Here are all the sides of it. And then here is the back. Now, obviously you want to see the back of the cards because everybody wants to know what the back of these cards look like. But if you ordered it, you're going to have a different back, obviously, and your name is going to be on the inside of it. So let's look again for any damage. Uh, edges are kind of frayed a little bit, but I mean, whatever, whatever. Okay, let's look through the deck. I am literally thrilled at this point to see this. I'm gonna definitely check this out and take a nice close look at it. Let me zoom in. I apologize in advance for the camera shake, but uh, I definitely wanna get a nice close look at these cards and give you that opportunity as well. Okay, so first thing I notice, it's borderless. I like that a lot. It's good that Chiro has gone, wow. It's good that Chiro has gone borderless. Wow, these are good looking cards. I like uh, Chiro Marchetti art uh, is, uh, is a thing of its own. Very, very beautiful. Let's check out the uh, quality of the cards and see how we like that. Here's the Fool. Looks like it's stuck to both the Magician is that stuck? Yeah, it appears to be stuck to the magician. Wow, that is really stuck. That is stuck very well to the magician. Wow, that was stuck too much. I said I don't have damage to the cars, but they were literally like glued together. Well, that's kind of weird. So, yeah. I do have damage to the cars, unfortunately. Wow. They were stuck together and it looks like they were just either the ink was the ink was pressed too hard or something. But uh, I'm kind of curious if this affects any other cards. We'll go through them. It doesn't. It doesn't appear to. Uh, let me go through these. Let's go through these. Sorry for the distraction here. But yeah, I got some cards that were permanently affixed to each other, it appears. 
Uh, the Fool, I like it. I like just sort of the, I guess, Chiro and the dog showing the actual card. I do like the astrology stuff within it. I think that is a nice touch to that. Now we have the Magician. I like the Magician and uh, all the various things in there, the Infinity. We've got the traditional Mercury and what have you. And um, I, I like... I like how this is done. I think this is very well done. Um, next, we have the High Priestess, which is, ooh, that is nice indeed. Just, just look at how vibrant these are and how much they pop out. Definitely a unique experience and a, a cool thing as well. I love the pillars. I love sort of the expression. I love the, the winged aspect of that as well. I think it's great. They have number three coming in here with the Empress. The creationism, I love how the creationism is really highlighted here, right? We have the, uh, I guess, the poinsettias and whatnot. We have the, um, uh, sort of the other flowers here. I love the cheetah and the deer and just the entire, somebody's calling me, and the entire aspect, I think, is great. I love, again, how he has incorporated all of the, uh, all of the good stuff in there. I like it. Now we have the emperor. Emperor, the unmasking of the emperor almost, or the re revelation of the emperor as well. I love the, again, the astrology built into this. Very vibrant, very prominent uh, within this deck. It's not a deck that has been messed around. Okay, the uh, Hierophant. Again, I love this. I love the Taurus feel of the Hierophant and whatnot. It looks really, really cool. Very, very cool. The, the uh, alphabet letters as well um, incorporated in there and a big part of this the lovers again another great one very very nice the uh, sensuality is sort of there but the fun the vibrancy i love how their uh, hats together make the heart i love how you have another implied heart here with all of the uh with the uh that so then we have the astrology still built into that but this looks like really kind of a just a culmination of everything he's kind of learned, right? From making the other tarot decks or uh, doing this for so long. I think he's really sort of come to his prime. I said that in the last deck. I think Chiro has come into his prime right now with these cards. Um, and the, the vibrancy, the beauty, and all of this other stuff is just so magnificent here. I mean, this is some of the, the greatest artwork I think that he's ever put out. And quite frankly, so um, really cool. I forgot to do the card quality. Look at the card quality. It's a little thinner. I mean, it does come to here, but uh, it's not like paper thin kind of thing. Uh, overall, I think it's perfectly acceptable. And this, this, I mean, obviously it's not going to be as thick as some of the other decks uh, that you see. I don't know what the GSM is. I assume 330 probably. It does feel pretty high quality, but it is going to be a little bit on the thinner side. So if you're used to uh, these really, really thick decks, then this is going to be a little bit on the thinner side. Ooh, I love the Hermit. The light steering in the general direction there coming at us. Um, very cool. I like the wheel. The wheel being sort of on its own. And then we have sort of either sort of a glass, looking through a glass, also like the hands, and the mannequin feel of the hands coming out as well. And again, we have all of the astrology stuff is built into here. So I imagine that this covers some of the astrology and whatnot, so we can sort of dive into this and uh, get this down. There you go. Uh, the astrology is here. The Hebrew letter is here too. A lot of good stuff. And guidebook is by Lee Bernstein, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, we'll look at the guidebook at the end. All right, here we go with Justice. Justice is blind indeed. Here we go, the Hanged Man, another beautiful card. Man, really, really good looking cards. Oh man, here we go. A little bit of a devil action going on there. And we have the, um, sorry, the death action going on there. We have the uh, Temperance, I like that. I like sort of the pouring over there. Uh, now we're sort of coming to the devil action. There you go. And we have the tower. Ooh, I love the, um, love sort of the creepy house feel of the tower. Again, I think Chiron has just like come into his prime, come into the place that, that you know, 
with the, with the borderless cards, the whole feel to it, the whole uh, aspect to it. I think it's really powerful. I love this star. I like the multiple points of contact with the water in the star. I like how it's built through. This is going to become one of my mainstay decks on the stream. Absolutely. And then we have a little bit of this going on with the moon. Ooh, I like that the dog and the wolf sort of embedded within here. And then you have kind of the face emerging out. Not only the crab emerging, but a face or an expression or somebody's spirit emerging through that as well. Love the sun. Obviously, I like the sun as a decoration. I think that's pretty cool, sort of sort of uh, in space as well. I like that. Judgment, the rebirth, the reincarnation has a lot of good feeling to it. Actually being lifted up and a hand assisting the lift or a hand bringing it together. And then finally, we have the world, which is obviously all the symbols are a little bit higher. And again, we have an expression and somebody coming in here with the dog, the fool's journey winding down, right? The fool's journey sort of winding up, winding down through there. We have the Ace of Swords. I like this. Ooh, the expression, the expression on the bird. Kind of that, that evil expression or that very intense expression. The blinding double sword action of the Two of Swords. And again, I really like all the astrology stuff being built into this. And obviously, being a Chiro deck, and I love the, um, the uh, color of the number being sort of based upon what this is, right? So you have the blue here. Let's look at maybe uh, the next suit uh, coming through here. Ooh, yes, yes. We have the, uh, the fiery wands. We have another blue, more of a lighter blue for cups. And pentacles, we kind of have the gold. And so the numbers immediately sort of give off what it's supposed to be, I like that. Three of swords, the heartbreak, the disappointment from there, four of swords, the rest, the relaxation, but the potential movement, right? A lot of times in the four of swords, there's implied a potential movement. We are resting, we are taking a break, we are moving, uh, we are la not moving. But the fact is, eventually we need to move, we need to launch out, and you have the implication of that here, which I think is very powerful. The Lord of Defeat, the good expression here, and the defeat ease uh, down there. We have the journey, which has a cat and an owl instead of people uh, within here. I love that. I love sort of the expression on her face. There's nobody actually moving the boat either, right? Feels like the boat may have power of its own, or it may be blocked even by the swords. I like the implication there. The Seven of Swords, the escapism, um, cute, cute. We have an animal sort of escaping this environment. And then we have the Eight with the restrictions. It's almost like the bird has no restrictions, but she does. I like how the uh, bird, bird, the cardinal's color matches the color of the blindfold as well. I think that the uh, Nine, okay, Nine of Swords, uh, the Nightmares, mm, I kind of like it sort of, in, with the moon, it kind of implies nighttime. So you have the implication of it there. And then you have the beautiful and permanent termination of the ten as well. Now we have the page of swords. Very cute. Again, a lot of animal activity, a lot of animal interaction within in here. We have the knight. Again, very pretty. Um, no horse, but you have the helmet sort of indicating the workhorse of the knight. The queen, again, with more birds, and the king. So, again, I love these expressions. I love all of this. Now we're hopping into the wands, right? Yep, the, the fiery wands. Now, love dragons or serpents or basically reptilian symbols in the wands. I think it has a lot of cool stuff. You have sort of the cheetah outline in the back as well, which really sort of makes the gray there. Two of Wands domain, uh, again, with sort of the serpent type of feeling at the top of the wands. I like the duality of the color as well, indicating maybe this is more complex than we realize. The three sort of looking out, scanning the environment. We have the four um, sort of having a home, a happy home, maybe a circus of the home, a definitely sort of a jovial type of feel there. Uh, the Five of Wands, the conflict, 
So we do have a conflict, maybe a blade or what have you, going through something or blade penetrating something along with the conflict. Here, we have the Six of Wands, the success and the beauty that we have there. I love the, the color scheme of this and how complex the clouds are as well. We have the support network down here and we have a person riding up with there. Now we have the Seven of Wands being defensive. Ooh, I love the multi-layered. What a great idea. What a, what a great innovation for this card. Uh, I love the multi-layers because there could be multiple layers of involvement here, multiple layers of things happening within this. Um, the eight, obviously just a plain movement. I, I kind of prefer the eight to be going towards the side or, or sort of angled instead of up and down. My personal preference because I do think there's a permanent landing space for the eight, and it also makes it card interactions a little bit better if I know which way the wands are going. Um, <clears throat> not my favorite <clears throat> for it being up and down, but what have you. Um, <clears throat> the nine of wands, the wounded warrior, kind of an unusual stance, almost sitting on the moon. I kind of like that, though. Uh, the ten. Uh, mirrors are used a lot, especially in the swords, from what I've seen. But this is, I think it's the first time in a long time I've seen maybe a wand card, especially the Ten of Wands having a mirror in there. Mirrors do have a lot of implications uh, in readings, and they also bring a lot of complexity to the reading, and uh, nice complexity sometimes that needs to be there. So I think that that is a good, uh, a good aspect to that. I'll be interested to dive into the book and to see uh, exactly how that sort of uh, worked over in the explanations. The page, ooh, I love the cracked egg and the new birth of a dragon. That is cool, that is damn cool. Chiro, that is damn cool, that's a cool, that's a cool concept, that's a really cool concept. Um, the knight, we have the queen, what a, what a clever expression. Now, do we have a black cat in the queen of wands? I mean, that's a necessity, maybe it's hidden, maybe it's there, and maybe it's implied being right here. I don't see one. I don't see one. Maybe it's implied being here. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, somewhere hidden. Find Waldo. Find the black cat. Because I know all of y'all gave me endless grief about black cat not being in the queen of wands. So I always look for it in every deck. Rewind. See if you can find it. Find Waldo. Uh, the king again with the serpents with the dragon feel. All right. Now we're coming to the cops. I love the animals, the frog, the shrooms, a little bit maybe of a woodpecker or a, I guess it's a woodpecker or I don't know. Maybe it's an implied hummingbird. You know, I don't know. Anyway, I like it. I like all of the animal. I like the animal action uh, within that. Now we have the two, which is, uh, or is this pentacles? Is this pentacles? I think this could be pentacles. That could be pentacles. Yeah, that's that's what that's a cup. Sorry, sorry, my bad. Pentacles, ace of pentacles, two of pentacles, the juggling, the choices. I, I like this because it implies a time restraint. You can make choices, but there could be some time restraint. There could be a time limit on your choices. Ooh, Chiro, what a good idea. What a cool idea. Maybe there's a deadline on these choices. Maybe you just don't have the freedom to do anything that you want. Um, I've seen ants before on a three because it is a group uh, work, group project, and ants. You see ants, bees, uh, you'll see all sorts of sort of, um, uh, you know, insects, animals, etc. that are going to have a uh, group effort going in through that teamwork kind of thing. Because um, teamwork is heavily implied there. The four, again, I like the the, the green. Green kind of implies very earthy, very earthy feel. I figured it would be like this or gold, maybe. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so and now you have the squirrel sort of hoarding. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good one too. The squirrel sort of hoarding, uh, getting everything ready for winter. And that also has an implication of getting ready for something. Maybe you're just not a hoarder. Maybe you're just not selfish. Maybe you're getting ready for something. Maybe you're prepping for something that is coming. I like the implication there. Five, uh, not having any money, right? Being a little homeless, being a little uh, needing some shelter there. The six, giving out, um, sort of handing it out to the birds, maybe giving them, I don't know, shelter, giving them some money so they can go spend it on an iPad. I don't know. 
I don't know. The seven, planting for the future. Very, very nice. Lots and lots. Look at the detail on the leaves. Jesus. A lot of detail on those leaves. We'll take a close look at that. I mean, that is a lot of detail on those freaking leaves. I mean, I know probably like clone stamped, changed the shading or something, but Jesus, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work, man. I mean, just as uh, somebody who fiddles with Photoshop, that's a lot of work. Anyway, um, yeah, the A to the hard work that's going in there, I love that. It's almost like a fiery, uh, almost like a fiery um, stamp or a fiery sort of uh, aspect going in there. Wait, like they're dipping, the, um, they're dipping this into the fire to melt it, right? A little melty action there going. Anyway, nine, the ramification, the fruits of our labor from the seven. Uh, then we have the 10, the happy family, happy home with all of that stuff. Uh, I like that. I like the sort of the hillside. Looks like a World of Warcraft, that, that floating area in the ground. The page, I love the, the intimacy the page has here. Very sort of good. Night, uh, proud of their environment and whatnot. And then we have the queen, and finally, the retired banker, the king. Wow, talk about a theme change. This is what I like to see. I, I mean, I hate to just keep saying this is what I like to see, but this is what I like to see. I like to see a dramatic theme change between the suits. So I know this feels like a water card. This feels like a pentacle card. I love that. I don't like decks that have all the same sort of theme, background. You get to a new suit and the cups looks like the wands, which we had in, in this deck over here, right? I just don't like that. You separate it out. Give me a cup feel, give me a watery feel, give me a theme. And I think that's what Chiro has done here. This is freaking, oh, Jesus, that looks good. That's like, it's like catching me off guard, it looks so good. I love the underwater field. I like the faces in the cups. Ooh, not only that, but sort of a face out of the cups as well. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a little city or a little land or what have you. Uh, again, with all the astrology stuff built into this. Uh, the three, the dancing with the mermaids. I've seen mermaids before in the three. Uh, the dancing really is nice. You have the water being rustled, the water sort of being impacted by all of the dancing. We have the four, getting some things maybe you don't want, you know, having enough and being offered one and not wanting any more. Yeah, I don't really see that in this card. I guess that's the first time I don't, I don't really see not wanting any more, right? Normally the person has a grim expression, whatnot, if it was like that. Another window, I love windows, mirrors, and tarot cards. I think you have a lot of meaning built into it. Uh, you have the disappointment, the spillage that is gonna be traditional here, and also sort of the heads down disappointment. Wow, look at that. Look at that six with the, the family, the children interaction. It's almost like a children's fantasy. This looks, I, this looks kinda of like the seven. I realize that's the seven, but this looks a lot like the seven. You have all of these different choices, sort of a child's fantasy. The reason I say that is because this is an illusionary car. This is the Lord of Illusionary Success. There are illusions. Sometimes this means illusions, delusions, psychosis, seeing things that are not there. A lot of times choices, good, bad, and different choices, what have you. But I think that's really, really cool. Um, but I love the sort of the child fantasy aspect that we have through here. Now here's all of the choices. We have the wealth, the riches, the um, uh, wealth, the riches, uh, maybe power, maybe the key to whatever we need to have, uh, time, we have the city, we have the serpent. So a lot of this stuff is there. We're missing the person kind of looking up at it. Eight of cups, a disappointing leaving, right? The sort of leaving, escaping, uh, not wanting the environment. Then we have the nine, which is traditionally a celebration. The nine is a celebration. The nine is a bunch of cups in the background being prepared for other people. And the fact that we have that beautifully represented here sort of in a, like a pub, right? We've just come out of a pub where we have a lot of different choices, a lot of groups coming in, a lot of people there. It is a gathering card. And I love that that is represented in sort of a, sort of a fun way here as we're exiting 
the pub. This also has some implications too, right? You're exiting the pub, you're leaving the pub. I think maybe the party is over. Maybe the celebration has concluded. Um, the 10, happy home, happy family. This is the new family. So we have the younger couple, the younger children, unlike the 10 of pentacles. And then we have the page, which of course is absolutely stunning. Again, vibrant, vibrant colors, beautiful, beautiful colors. Uh, and then the knight, we have the queen, and the queen is kind of stuck. Oh no, more damage? Yep, the queen is kind of stuck to the king. Okay, um, so we do have damaged cards. We do have a few damaged cards. Um, we have the king is damaged. We have the queen is damaged. Um, of course, Tiro Marchetti being Tiro Marchetti will replace these. I have, I have zero doubts. <laughs> he already emailed that some people have got damaged cards, so check your cards out. Um, so I did get a couple of damaged cards, but 100% guaranteed that Tiro will replace those. And uh, looking forward to uh, getting the 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 uh, re the repaired cards or the replacement cards, uh, so that I can start reading with these. Uh, overall, Jesus Christ! Overall, this is this is one of the most amazing decks I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I hate to, I mean, this could be the deck of the year. This could be the deck of the year. I'm really leaning on this is the deck of the year. Just the vibrancy, the beauty of it, and stuff like that. Let's take a look, of course, at the book. This is going to be a long review. I apologize, but it is it is what it is. Mystic Palette, book by Lee Burns, uh, Lee Burston. Lee Burston. Sorry to butcher that. I love that we get a, uh, you know, a signed card. I, I'm actually, you know, I love the signed card. I like that a lot. Okay, here's the guidebook. Introduction by Chiro Marchetti. We have the preface. Uh, here are the contents, in case you're wondering. We have an introduction, the major, the minors, uh, mystic talent spread, and some sample readings at 112. The book encompasses 118 pages, 119 pages. A mix of black and white and color, which is interesting. So let's look at a chapter on the Empress. Here we have the Empress. Um, it explains the symbology. It explains sort of how to read the card and whatnot. I'll let you pause and read. I'll let you pause and read the remainder of the Empress. Again, the astrology is huge. A lot of stuff with the astrology, with the Hebrew letters and what have you, and a lot of beautiful artwork on here. Um, here is the Emperor. I'll let you pause and read a snippet of the Emperor. I love the face coming off without the face, or the mask just coming off by itself. I like that, very cool. All right, now let's look at <laughs> some minors. Let's look at the Eight of Wands, which is a good looking, good looking uh, symbology, good looking sort of pulling. In other words, it's not just the card that he pulled out some of the symbology, pulled out some of the artwork and then merged it kind of with that. I'll let you pause and read the Eight of Wands, the Nine of Wands, and then the Ten of Wands. And then let's look at the back. Uh, we have the Ace of Coins, Queen of Coins, what have you. Mystic Palette Spread, here you go. Um, so there is a Mystic Palette Spread. And here is the conclusion of the book uh, at 120 pages. All right, let's look at the cloth real quick and wrap this reading up. Uh, we already saw the We already saw the bag that it comes with, which is very nice. I always love getting a bag. I like getting a bag when you have like a bigger box. Like if you have a big heathen box, I like having a bag with it. Does that make sense? Because once you open the tarot, now it's not really gonna fit in the box, right? It's gonna flop around, it's gonna get damaged. But the uh, Tiro included a bag, which I absolutely adore and I love. And again, you know, that is a Tiro Marchetti high quality. Wow, Tiro Marchetti quality there. Okay, so here is my particular cloth. I chose this one. Again, it does not have the, does not have the extra backing that his uh, uh, more expensive cloths do, but it uh, obviously vibrant, beautiful. He's got a little printing press for these things. And uh, it, you know, it's smaller than the $65 cloths, but it, it is just gorgeous. I mean, just stunning imagery. Definitely something you can use on your stream or on your YouTube videos. Uh, definitely something to take to a psychic fair or whatnot. Overall, um, this is a wonderful and beautiful 
um, set. He signed the box. He signed the card. Uh, we have a lot of signatures uh, on here. Did he sign the book too? Maybe he signed the book? No? No, he did not sign the book. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't see one. Okay, anyway. But yeah, the extra signatures from Chiro. I greatly appreciate that. Obviously, anything coming from Chiro is going to be super high quality. This is no exception. This is expensive, but wow, it's worth it. Wow, it is extremely worth it. So uh, definitely, if you can get your hands on this, if he ever reprints the custom version, he does sell a non-customized version, which will have a standard back instead of a custom back. Uh, definitely pick that up from his site. That is available now, I believe. Uh, anyway, wow, 100%. This is going to be one of my mainstay decks for many, many, many years. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about the Mystic Palette Tarot, and we'll see you next time.